Okay, if you've got problems with anxiety, depression, BPD, trauma, chances are you've got heightened sensitivity. Okay, so we're going to get into what you can do that might help with that. Okay, so today we're talking about sensitivity. Now, sensitivity, it's not specific to a diagnosis. It can actually come from more kind of temperament, early personality styles, but we see that it has an impact on most kind of mental health issues because people have difficulty dealing with day-to-day -day stuff when they've already been burdened by other mental health issues. Yeah, exactly. So the, the more sensitivity you've got, the, the greater the chances are that you're going to get kind of overwhelmed and end yeah. up with some kind of problem. Yeah. yeah. So we let's start off with defining temperament, right? So temperament is the early formation of personality. We are born with our temperament. You've got no choice over your temperament. And if you've ever been around kids, particularly if you've been around kind of different types of kids, you would know some kids are easy to settle, they're chill, they'll eat, they'll sleep, they're happy to sit and watch the world go by, and other kids... They're fussy, they're hard to settle, it's hard to get them to feed, it's hard to get them to sleep. They need a lot more uh, support in managing their emotions. Now there we see kind of some variance in, in temperament that links to kind of how we experience sensitivity or the intensity with which we experience sensitivity. And that links to what we're talking about today. Indeed, indeed. I, I should also add that that can be, um, if you've got sensitivity and then you experience childhood trauma, you'll end up with even more sensitivity. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But but you're right. It, it's there's a it's it's heritable. Okay. So often yep. you know often uh, anxiety disorders and neurosis and that kind of thing uh, are highly heritable. Yep. We even know a couple of the genes that result in it. Yep. Okay. So it, there's a, there's a strong con genetic component. All yep. right. So let's have a let's have a think about how this sort of manifests in yep. in our kind of day to day worlds. All right. So. We've got this little scale here, one to ten, and that's the sort of hypothetical intensity of a given situation. Yes. All right. So, so you and I might experience a similar sim situation. Yes. Okay. But because our temperaments are different. Yes. Okay. We might not have the same kind of uh, level of, say, negative emotion reaction to yes. a given situation. Yes. Okay. Can I talk about orchid and daisy? Please. Right. So, this is a story that I actually heard of a friend of mine that's pretty good, and it talks about the difference between kind of uh, temperament in terms of orchids and daisies. Have you ever tried to grow an orchid? Uh, you with difficulty. <laughs> Orchids can be a bit of a challenging plant to grow. They need exactly the right amount of water. They have their own special little uh, kind of potty mix that they like. They've got to get the right amount of sun and it's usually more kind of dappled shade or morning sun and they don't like the afternoon sun. And once they find their perfect spot, then they're okay. You can kind of let them be and they'll do their thing and they're all right. But if you move them or you change them, they struggle with that. Yeah. Whereas daisies, you ever try to grow a daisy? <laughs> Up they come. You really need to try no, grow daisies. No. Daisies just grow. They can grow at the beach. They can grow at the park. Kids can ride the do bike on them. Dogs can pee on them. And daisies just keep doing their thing. And you might find that there's people in your life who are orchids and daisies, right? So the orchids find that things are, they feel things a little bit more intensely, okay? They're, which can also mean they have a bit of a, uh, a bigger emotional response. And it also takes them a bit longer to have an, a, kind of the come down of the emotions response afterwards. Whereas daisies... They're a bit kind of more chill, they're a little bit more relaxed, kind of the intensity of the emotions don't kind of go up so high. Now, I'm a bit more of an orchid and you're a bit more of a daisy. Okay. Yeah? Okay, yeah. So how you and I respond to situations can be different compared to how we, based on our temperament. But then we also have stuff that influences our threshold on from a kind of a broader perspective as well as on any given day sort of level. Yeah, so if we if we consider a, a sort of a given situation, okay, um, we consider how resilient or how fragile we might be to that situation. Yeah. Okay? Yep. Um, so so your, your orchids might need a situation that's, you know, um, five out of 10 to kind of yep. upset them, whereas you might need a seven or an eight out of 10 sort of situation to upset someone yeah. more of a day. Yeah, so your threshold for becoming distressed is higher than what mine is. Yeah, yeah. But, our personal thresholds can change as well. Yes. Okay, so even though you might be kind of lower in this range than me, there are things that you can do to improve your resilience. Yes. And there are things that I can unintentionally do to worsen my resilience. Yes. yes. Okay. So kind of me being an orchid, I kind of I was described as a very sensitive child. I was kind of stopped being such a drama queen. I was quick to tears as as a kid, and then kind of through my teens, adolescence into kind of my early 20s and now into my 30s, I have done the work to get better at tolerating it. And most of that comes down to kind of doing the skills. Okay. So I can feel stuff intensely and I have more confidence in my ability to still tolerate the situation even though I'm feeling it. Nice. You've got a bit more of a predisposition to be able to tolerate situations, but I see kind of when you get a bit 
overburdened with work or there's lots of stuff going on or you're juggling lots of things, that's when you start actually coming back down this way. So there's Which, stuff that can yeah. lower our threshold. So let's get into that. So what you just described of me yeah. is if I have a big accumulation of stressors, like yeah. my workload's crazy and I've got a million things going on, especially if some of them are going wrong, okay, then I'll get kind of, it'll be easier for, for me to... You get to, flustered just that little yeah, bit easier. Yeah. So that's, that's certainly going to be something that will, that's going to affect everyone, okay? Yep. So a lot of stressors, um, which is another way of saying a lot of chaos, yep. okay? The more chaos you have, okay, the more your resilience gets eroded. Yep. All right? Um, let's sort of work our way down the list. Lack of sleep. Yeah, that, that one's pretty obvious. Like, you know, if you've had a, a bad night's sleep, then your ability to deal with whatever life throws you the next day is potentially a bit hampered. Yeah. And if there's an accumulation of poor sleep, then it, the kind of the accumulation of the effect at the other end is also going to be heightened. Yeah. I think kids are a really good... Because adults learn skills and things. Yeah. Like, kids are a really good problem. Yeah. Kids don't sleep, they're a nightmare. Yes. Okay, their sensitivity yes. is way up and it's super obvious. Yeah. Okay? Which is uh, along the lines of there's no recharge opportunity. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. You, you, if you're working your brains out, even though you, you might be working at a reasonable kind of level, you kind of do need a bit of downtime from time to time just to sort of charge your batteries up. And if you don't get that, you don't take leave, you just grind on and on and on. Which, these two are usually linked. When there's so much yeah. stress, you don't make time for the or opportunity you or you can't find yeah. the opportunity for the recharge. Yeah. Unresolved trauma. Now, I talk about this with my patients. It's like, you've heard the stress bucket metaphor, right? Mm -hmm. So let's imagine that kind of we are a 10 litre bucket. We've got 10 litres worth of capacity to deal with stress before we start bird, uh, kind of overflowing. Mm -hmm. Unresolved trauma is kind of like the sediment that just lives at the bottom of the bucket. Until that's been resolved, you've got reduced capacity to deal with whatever else life throws at you. So when there's unresolved trauma or there's unresolved kind of stresses and chaos in the past, that just sits in the bottom of the stress bucket, yeah. and it's always there until you process exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, and, and, and thereby, you're more fragile until you can resolve the trauma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Being crook. I mean, we've kind of well, I mean, a, look, a it, it might be category. like self-inflicted, yeah. unwell. So, uh, being, being, being hungover is a good example, though, because you could be perfectly fine one day, and then you can be hungover as hell, and you're way more fragile. Stuff gets under your skin like crazy. Yeah. Okay, so that's a super obvious example. But just being being crook, having pain, yeah. you know, anything that sort of undermines your integrity, yeah. your, 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 your physiological integrity, yeah. can, can lead you to have greater fragility yeah. okay and i guess one big category of that is inflammation yeah. so that can be because of illness it can be because of injury um it can be because of food yeah diet diet's food. a huge one yeah. okay so you know some people who are really kind of going hard with the sugar and stuff and driving up their inflammation yeah. that's a big problem if it's generally just a bad day if things are feeling pretty meaningless if there's kind of this this stuckness, I don't like what I, I don't like my stressors, I don't like my trauma, I'm not willing to deal with it, I'm not willing to face them. Yeah, just but before we leave, I think not just feelings are meaningless, but if you if you if you're not adopting responsibilities, if you're not actually if you don't have meaning in your life, okay, it, meaning kind of helps us endure suffering. You know, so so if we don't have that, so feelings of, of meaninglessness usually means you're not taking on things that are meaningful, I would say. I think that's that's a problem. And then the last one around kind of just detesting discomfort or constantly wanting to seek comfort and stay in your comfort zone because it means when things do start to accumulate in your stressors, your ability, no, nah, I don't like this, I don't like this, kind of take me back you, to my you, comfort you zone. You fragilise yourself. You know, if you wrap yourself in cotton wool with any little perturbation is going to have you in a tits mm -hmm. okay so so yeah av avoiding discomfort just sticking in the comfort zone the whole time is is actually in the long term reduces your your threshold of mm -hmm. capacity and makes you more fragile okay so what can we do to improve it lots of stuff okay right. so, so and, and a lot of stuff is kind of relatively easy so this one here is critical so working through things so if you've got a lot of chaos or if you just got problems in your life you're having a relationship issue you're having this issue you've got a legal thing god knows what you gotta work through that stuff. Otherwise yeah. it is just this mess up there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So how can you work through it? Well you can talk things through. That's yeah. helpful, assuming you've got someone that you can talk things through. If you don't, you could always sort of write stuff out and yeah. do sort of more sort of formal problem solving yeah. work in that way as well. Yeah. But you're basically you're going to get this chaos that's up here, you want to get it ordered. Ideally maybe on some paper. So then you've got to kind of write, okay, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, I know what I need to do. Yeah. Okay. You've just yeah. reduced your chaos. Okay. 
exercise has a role here. Again, you don't want to smash yourself to pieces. If you if you, well, you completely, smash yourself, you're back over yeah, here. Exactly, or if yeah. you're too sedentary, then you're over here. Yeah, yeah. So so this is sort of leaning into I guess tolerable discomfort if you like. Okay. Yeah. So you want to do enough exercise, okay, that you've got a bit of stamina, you've got a bit of up and go. Yeah. Okay. If you again, if you're leaning into comfort, you don't do any exercise and your stamina tanks, everything feels yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. Sleep hygiene, so to mitigate lack of sleep as much as possible. You're always going to have bad nights, or if the kids are having a bad night yeah. or whatever, there'll be the occasional thing that stuffs up your sleep. But if generally speaking, your sleep hygiene is consistent, you're giving yourself the best opportunity to have a decent night's sleep. Yeah, and if you work through your problems, chances are you're going to sleep better. Yeah, because it's the it'll, problems that are keeping yeah, it'll your reduce your mental arousal. Have a yeah. look at our um, Calm Your Head Before Bed talk if you want some more help with that one. Knowing what skills you so first of all, having the skills. Mm -hmm. having the knowledge the knowledge of the skills, recognising an opportunity to implement the skills, understanding which skills to apply. What, what skills? What do you mean specifically? Well, um, let me, you can have a look at any of this. It can be... What, distress um, modulation It can skills. be distress tolerance skills yeah. of being able to reduce the intensity of it. We talk about stop, we talk about tip, but we've done the video with the thing with the ice pack of if things are getting really intense. Self-soothing skills, kind of DBT, CBT are very structured on the sort of skills we talk about there. Doing your own distress cycle worksheet to help you understand what's going on here can be a good skill. Okay, so what, what we're saying here then is that knowing that you can do things about it if you get overwhelmed yeah. is empowering and actually helps your results. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. but then also practicing the skills gives you the confidence that when the situation arises, you know that you're going, you've, you've got a solution for it. Yeah. You've got something in your toolkit to be able to respond with. Yeah. Medication plays a role in this. Yeah, well, look, med medications will, in, in, like SSRIs we're talking about specifically here, if you, if you increase your level of sort of serotonergic activation, it does reduce your sensitivity. Okay, so yeah. that will, I mean, it's a sort of, you know, obviously it's an artificial way of doing it, okay, but yeah. it, it sort of, it buys you some more resilience, yeah. okay, and that might buy you an opportunity if you don't have skills to learn some skills, for yeah. example. So we've just done a talk on this on SSRIs versus SNRIs, particularly looking at the benefits of each of those, so if you want a more detailed uh, discussion on that, check out our other video on that one. Yeah. Um, and then the willingness to tolerate discomfort, to know that life isn't always going to be easy. It's not always going to be kind of sunshine daisies and lollipops. It's going to have days where it's going to be hard and your willingness to kind of get that gumption to push through it and to tolerate the discomfort. Yeah, what, one, if you know that you can tolerate some discomfort, it doesn't feel so overbearing. Okay? Yes. Again, you don't want to push yourself into the point of intolerable discomfort, okay? But then you don't want to be in the point of excessive comfort either. You want to... Kind of walk that middle ground between order and chaos. Find a dialectic. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. All right. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. So looking at, yes, there'll be stuff that life throws at you, but you, there are things that you can do to help manage the way in which you are able to respond to the situations when they do come up to increase your resilience to be able to tolerate distressing situations. Thanks, folks. Bye.